I do like the fact that I can photograph this male kangaroo in this natural forest habitat. I happen to know where he lives, and I've photographed him before. He has all he needs here, food, water, other kangaroos, and plenty of forestry cover. In fact, miles of it. So I deliberately went into the forest on a wet day so the light would be soft and I wouldn't be fighting the normal high contrast from the Australian sun. But even with soft light, my editing involves masks all the time now. And this brings me to intersecting a mask. This is a way that we can modify one mask by using another. We're almost splicing the two together. Now as we view this image in Adobe Camera Raw, you can see on the right hand side I've done some global editing already. But the weakness of the image is the brightness of the out of focus foreground grasses and they need strategic editing. Now the obvious mask choice would be the linear gradient mask. But the problem is obvious when we apply it. We're going to adversely affect the main subject, our kangaroo, as well as the grass. So let's intersect the gradient with another different mask. We can do this from our gradient mask window here. Now I'm going to choose the subject, the kangaroo. When we do that though, Camera Raw gets this a little wrong. It's round the wrong way. But we can simply invert the mask. We can use the icon over on the right hand side here, or we can simply hit the X key. Now we have the perfect mask for the job. So I can now proceed to make those adjustments. I want to take the exposure well down quite a lot I think. I may even want to take a little bit of colour away because sometimes the colour can detract a little bit, not much but just a little. And straight away we've got a nice balanced shot. But perhaps given the solid nature of the top of the image we could reproduce that a little bit at the bottom because there really is no problem from applying another linear gradient. And the shortcut key for that is G, which I've just touched. And now I can click and drag up from the bottom. I only want to come up a little way. But I'll add just a little more darkness there, maybe even a little blacks, just to give it a better balance with the top of the image. Now I have a couple of minutes left in this video, so let's see if we can process another shot from this session within that time. Hit the Auto button. It doesn't always give us an acceptable result, but it will certainly point us in the right direction. Here I've got too much colour. I'm going to drop that down in the vibrance and also take down some of the exposure. Dealing with the base of the image, touching the G key. Click and drag to bring up my graduated filter. And as before, intersect with the subject. As soon as Photoshop's done that, I'll set to work. First of all, I need to touch that X key. I'm going to drop down the exposure here, drop down the blacks to give myself a nice solid base to the image. Once again, I'm going to hit G just to bring in a graduated or linear mask from the left. Not too much of a change here, just a little bit of darkening, quite delicate, and G again to do the same on the right hand side. What I'd like to do is to give the animal a bit more impact. So selecting the subject as a mask, once that appears on screen, I could take a look at the blacks and the whites, make the animal stand out a little more. We're losing some of the shadows a little bit, so I'll brighten those and maybe a little bit of texture on the animal and already we're getting quite a long way to producing this image. If you look at the muzzle of the animal, let's zoom into that, we can see that the eyes are very blue. 
I'm going to use another mask here, but I'm going to use a brush. So I'm good, going to touch the K key to bring up the brush. There you can see the brush. You can see my flow over here is quite low. So I'm going to just brush over the eye and over this eye here. All I want to do here is to raise the shadows, to lift the exposure and to bring up the temperature to take away a lot of that vivid blue. Back to the exposure a little bit. Now I could use the same mask to deal with the muzzle of the animal. But I can drop the flow rate down and I can do this just very, very gently. Because I don't need to do very much at all. So there we are. Just a little over five minutes, but under six. And about two minutes and 45 seconds for the entire editing of my mate here. Thanks for watching.